Well, I think that depends. I think it depends on what you can get in the offseason. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, Chris Paul only missed eight games this year. DeAndre Jordan only missed five. Blake Griffin missed 47 games this year. Uh, obviously, he was, you know, had a couple of issues, and, and because of that, uh, injuries to his hand, injuries to his hamstring, it ultimately forced him to miss a grand total of, of 47 games. So we don't know what this team would have been. Uh, chances are they would have made it to the Western Conference Finals if Steph Curry was not able to play in this Western Conference semifinal series, although I don't think that's a foregone conclusion that that would have happened. You have to also remember, in my mind, they finished 20 games back of Golden State um, in the division this year. So I look at it from that standpoint, and they're clearly not good enough. Now, if you, want, if you can't get anything, you keep it intact because of the freak injuries to Blake Griffin and Chris Paul in the playoffs after the regular season, of course, uh, and you go for it. But if you're Doc Rivers and somebody comes to you and they say, you know what, Cleveland doesn't win the chip. Kyrie's looking to move on. We'd like to move Kyrie to Los Angeles so Chris Paul will come to Cleveland. How do you turn that down when Chris Paul uh, clearly is entertaining being gone from L.A. because he desperately wants to compete for a championship and he has an opt-out after the upcoming, after next season. So we have to look at that. Blake Griffin has an opt-out after next season. What's his commitment to staying in L.A.? These are all things that I would have to inquire about and I'd have to make sure that it's something that they desperately wanted so I don't have to worry about them leaving me high and dry for nothing. So the safe answer to your question is that I would say Keep them intact, but be prepared to move them before the trading deadline as opposed to moving them before the, uh, during the summer unless a blockbuster offer came to your table that you absolutely positively could not refuse. So, Stephen A., if you get that phone call and your doc, Kyrie straight up for Chris Paul, who's played now 11 years at age 31, you doing it? Yes. I am too. I'm, I'm not even thinking twice about it. It's done. Because of the youth. Yeah. Because, because, of, because of the youth. youth. Yeah. And yeah. by the way, as you often say, Kyrie's a bad man now. He, he, again, if, if, you, if you take him away from LeBron and make, you put him in charge of this team with this much talent, I would like their chances. I thought Chris Paul had a, a tremendous year this year, one of his best years ever. But it just seems like it would be good to freshen up the perspective of both players and swap them. It just seems like an obvious deal to make for both sides because it would give Cleveland a real shot to win next year if, in fact, they well, can't win this year. Two things. Number one, Kyrie ain't even in Chris Paul's class as a floor general. Nope. And Chris Paul is not the offensive player no, that Kyrie Irving is. He is not. But Kyrie is not, Kyrie is not the floor general. I think it's a deal that will work for both because Chris Paul with LeBron, I mean, you're talking, you're talking potential title right there, his yeah. best chance ever at a title. And Kyrie, clearly the Clippers would be his team, and he's considerably younger than Chris Paul. Now, it's yeah. not to say that he's better than Chris Paul or Chris Paul is better than him in certain respects. Chris Paul is a better floor general. Kyrie's a better scorer. But I think because of the youth, I would, I would put him out in L.A. because I don't think the Clippers are close to beating Golden State or San Antonio or OKC for that matter, usurping them, yep. assuming Kevin Durant remains there. I don't You're see right. that happening. And then the other half of the equation, obviously the Clippers had the sixth man of the year in Jamal Crawford, but do they have a seventh, eighth, and ninth man like Austin Rivers? But, again, they wanted Paul Pierce to be that guy this year, and he was not that guy. So no. that's, that's the other half that, that remains unfixed right now with the Clippers. You're right. Griffin, Jordan, CP3, all under contract and all expected to make more than $20 million next year. We saw vintage D. Wade in the last series. Dwayne Wade looked like the old Flash in the Heat's first round with that win against the Hornets. So will we see the same in round two against Toronto? We'll pick that series next. <laughs> Has the second best odds, but you can see here, eight to five, followed by Oakland at seven to two, and San Diego is the underdog at eight to one. The coach, Herm, back in the house. Mm. Herm, Denver, mile high, are they a lock? Uh, I don't think a lock. Yeah. Um, best quarterback in the division we know is Phillip Rivers, especially if you can keep him protected. I think they've done some things on the offseason. Allen will be back to find receiver. Uh, Melvin Gordon, uh, Good football player, but it's kind of ironic. Didn't score a touchdown last year. 
I would hope he could score a touchdown this year, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gates is coming back, but he's, he's getting a little long in the tooth. But San Diego will be much improved because of the quarterback, if they can keep him standing. Uh, Denver, I think, is a team that is going through transition. When you think about they lost some players, Malik Jackson being one, Trevathan Marshall on defense. Uh, they have two uh, new offensive linemen in Okun uh, and Stevens that will play there. So that offensive line will be switched around. They lost two quarterbacks, by the way, on the offseason. They bring in Mark Sanchez. They're hoping they get the Mark Sanchez that won four playoff games on the road, not the Mark Sanchez that has thrown 86 touchdown passes and turned the ball over 108 times. They hope they're not to get that guy. They got to get Paxton Lynch. Uh, uh, I don't know if he is ready to play uh, right now. I think he's a guy that, you know, maybe a year from now he might be ready to play. I like some of their draft picks. Uh, Devontae Booker, I love the guy. I think he's, a, he's an older running back out of Utah State. I like the Raiders. I think the Raiders are much improved, especially what they did on the offseason. Uh, they went out and signed some free agents. Uh, uh, Irvin, who comes from Seattle, uh, Sean Smith, a corner. They were in their division he, from Kansas City. Now they got two nice corners. They have the ability to rush. Um, you look at their offense, uh, I like the quarterback. I think the quarterback is, is, is going to play well again this year. Uh, Crabtree played well last year for him. He found his way. Cooper kind of died off at the end, but I think the Raiders are an upcoming team. I think Kansas City is a team. Uh, Houston is, 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 might be not available early, but they get Jamal Charles back. That helps their offense. Yeah. They probably have the best tight end uh, in the division. Not counting out Gates, but Gates is getting long. He's on the back nine now. Uh, Kelsey, Macklin played well. Uh, their defense will be good. Uh, so I think it's a, a good division. I really do. I, I, I just think it's very competitive. Uh, but I don't think the Denver Broncos are a lock by any stretch mm. of imagination. No. Yeah, especially Not a lock. quarterback situation. Stephen A. Well, I love the fact that Elway moved up to get Paxton Lynch. I'll give him a lot of credit for it. Um, I also loved what San Diego did, shocking everybody by taking Joey Boser number three overall and drafting a, an eventual replacement to Antonio Gates at the tight end spot with Hunter Henry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm st I still would have liked to have seen them invest more in offensive linemen because you got to keep Phillip Rivers upright, Coach, and I think yes. that that was something that needed to be a priority, and that's not necessarily the case. Right. What I love in the AFC West is Oakland. And the reason why I love Oakland is because they got this kid called Joseph who's considered a heavy hitter, and it feeds into the mystique of the silver and black. We know what Khalil Mack represents and what he brings to the table. But if you've got somebody behind him that's, uh, that's a hit man per se, now you're feeding into the mystique of the silver and black, which is what made them so successful in years past. And that's what I really, really like. And I love this kid, Shalik Calhoun, out of Michigan State, because, Skip, he was somebody that jumped off my screen at times, you know, when I watched yep. him this year as well. So I look at it from, from the standpoint, obviously they, there's more that they could do offensively. You got Derek Carr. You got Amari Cooper. You're seeing some of the things that they're trying to do. I get all of that. But losing a Charles Woodson, getting a guy like Carl Joseph, back there behind Khalil Mack and feeding into the mystique that is the Oakland Raiders. Plus, you're drafting a versatile defensive guy in Shalik Calhoun. I think you're feeding into that mystique. I think that matters because what you want to do if you're the Oakland Raiders, you want to know that when folks come into the stadium to play you, they know you're going to put some wood on them. I think those are the kind of thing that galvanizes Raider Nation, which ultimately inspires this, this young crop of, of, of guys for the Raiders because one of the reasons they wanted to be a Raider is because they feed into this kind of stuff. So the more you feed into that imagery, particularly with Jack Del Rio as your coach, I think that helps the Raiders. And I think that out of all the teams in the AFC West, I would give the edge to Oakland in terms of what transpired on draft day. Mm. Back to the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. They lost too many good players on defense to dominate this division anymore. They are going to fall back to earth on defense. Not great players, but good ones. And you listed a bunch of yes. them. Now, I, I love what the Raiders continue to do, loading up that roster with nothing but, but talent and, and heavy hitting talent. I, I love, too. yeah, a speed. lot of speed. Uh, Stephen Davis A. Murray's yeah. all right. Okay, but. They're going to go as far as that young quarterback yes. takes them. And, and, and he tailed off a little bit. He at did. The Derek he did. Carr. He did. So I'm not sure about that. Now I'm back to Herm's opening comment in this segment. 
the best quarterback in the division, is still in San Diego. Love him. And he's not too old. He's Love 34. Him. You know, he's kind of a, you know, he, he didn't have much of a year last year. They didn't have much of a year. Four and 12. Yes. Couldn't protect they, they lost Eric Weddle. They couldn't protect him, but they added Brandon Amebane and Casey Hayward and Dwight Lowry, and I like them all, and Travis Benjamin on the other side is a deep threat. Yes. And Stephen A. brought it up. I love Joey Bose. I wanted my Cowboys to take him early on. Yes. And, and Hunter Henry, I watched a lot. He's an absolute stud. He's got some, he's got hey. some red flag concerns, too, but it's well, okay. Well, he's got some, but you know what? He's tall and strong, and no, he makes I, plays I like, like crazy. He's a good player. And, and you he's put him player. with the aging Antonio, and, and you, yeah. you got uh, Travis Benjamin flying up the side, and you, you point out Keenan Allen's coming back, Stevie Johnson's coming back, Melvin Gordon's got breakaway speed. All of a sudden, yeah. you, you got firepower, man. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not counting out the San Diego Chargers to rise up and win this division next year. It'll be very competitive. Yeah. Uh, San Diego always plays Denver good for yeah. some reason. They just have a knack of playing Denver good. and. Um, you know, it's a shame because Philip Rivers is in the back nine of his career, and you're watching a guy that has really been one of the top quarterbacks in yes. the league. Uh, you you want to? I, I I love to see him get back in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of those guys that he makes you he makes you angry when you play him because he's that feisty guy. Mm -hmm. He's always saying. So I can remember, you know, competing against him as a coach. I love competing against Philip. I love the guy. I just loved him to death because he, he brought energy to the game. You know, generally a quarterback doesn't bring energy to the game. He brings energy because when you watch him on the sideline and you watch him in the game, he's getting after guys. He's getting after defense guys. He's competing. And you're hopefully they can protect this guy because he is a really good quarterback. Did he talk trash to you on the sideline? No, he was good. We had a great oh. relationship. Okay. We really do. He's, uh, he's, 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 he's one of the best. I, I love him. Did and you I, ever I talk hope... trash at all on the sideline? Oh, me? As a coach? Yes. As a coach? Yes. Uh, no. Just... <laughs> A few, uh, a few, just a few things I would say. Just sometimes, but just uh -huh. a subtle, uh -huh. subtle, a class just subtle. Now, as a cornerback, whole I'm different story. Oh. Yeah, oh. I, I got whole different story. Yeah, to Drew oh, Pearson, or Tony Hill. Sure Drew was, Drew was yeah. my guy. Yeah. Drew was my guy. Right. Mod Rashad, yeah. I saw them all. Yeah, I saw them all. Definitely a competitive division, though. This one's going to be fun. Herm, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, Coach. Good to see you, my friend. Mm -hmm. You look good without that tie on, man. I like that look. He looks handsome. I like it. We call it suave. Yes, very suave.